You're listening to an Anderson Entertainment production. This episode, we're getting bored with fairy tales in Fab Facts. A maiden flight isn't quite going to plan in the randomizer. And we're a rocking and a rolling with a Malcolm Garrett. We're always a rocking and rolling uh, in a uh, podcast, but this is Pop 197. <laughs> of the Jerry Anderson Podcast. We'll have to pay PRS for that. Let's get started. Let's go. Spectrum is green. The Jerry Anderson Podcast with Jamie Anderson and Richard James. Oh, are you all right there? What? But I'm, I'm still rocking and rolling. Yeah. Do you, oh, I see. Do you know what you remind me of? Bizarrely, when when Dad what? was Go doing on. DIY when I was a kid, he would always yeah. do this peculiar sort of whistling under his breath thing, <laughs> and it, it just just gave me. Dad, ah. dad DIY vibes ah, there. Well, kind of, that's my gift to you. It's kind of sweet, but kind of frustrating. Oh, well, that's why people listen to the Jerry Anderson podcast. <laughs> that's our tagline. <laughs> yes. Anyway, well, I'm the kind of sweet Jamie Anderson. And over and there. I, I must be the frustrating Richard James. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that coming. Only mildly frustrating, I would <laughs> yeah. say. I could live with that, yeah. Uh, anyway, we're your uh, co hosts for the Jerry Anderson podcast, along mm-hmm. with, uh, goodness mm-hmm. me. What now? Well, he's. He's all, he's all wrapped what? in plaster and doing? on crutches. Chris, what's oh, happened? What? Uh, poor man. He can't even what? speak because he's... I, oh, I, did, I didn't know you could have a plaster cast for your jaw, but even no. that. Yeah. He just looks like a mummy over there. Anyway, well, hopefully he'll crack oh. out of his uh, strange uh, full body plaster cast in time <laughs> yes. for the randomizer later on. Uh, yes. Because although last week's randomizer was not random because it was a part two. True. This week's randomizer will be random because... Well, there are no more parts to Space 1999 Bring Us a Wonder. This time it'll be a random episode of a random series, and Chris will hopefully, maybe, say some things about it. Otherwise, it'll be left to Marina, and that'll be a yeah, rather quiet well, 30 it minutes. Will. That's true, yes. Anyway, that's at the end of the podcast. Before yep. that, many yep. things will arise, ah. uh, and uh, one of them is Richard James, who's now going to arise and tell you about the future <coughs> things that will arise in this podcast. Arise, uh, Sir Richard. <coughs> Emails... Yes, tweets yes facebook posts yes youtube comments yes second part of your interview with malcolm garrett mbe yes and newsy news 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 yes fab facts very good uh, thank you beautifully delivered as if you were reading from a scroll very nice yeah but they say, oh i should have done the whole oh yay thing shouldn't i yeah next time oh what a missed opportunity you can town crier it in pod I'd 198 i'd love to be a town crier i think i'd be really good at you'd it you'd make a top-notch uh, town crier i think absolutely uh anyway before i uh, give richard any more um career advice uh <laughs> yes yeah you might want to think about uh, yeah. giving up this podcast yeah. thing for a town, yeah. uh, town crier that's your I, calling i mean i would you get a really nice uniform and everything don't you <laughs> Yeah, you, you could wear it for the podcast anyway. Look, Richard, we're rambling, <laughs> and sorry, what, sorry. what the podsterons are really here for? Oh yes, sorry, sorry. Is this week's fab facts? Eh? Uh, now, time for this week's fab facts. Fab facts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Richard James's yeah. favourite part of the podcast. Yeah. Mm. Uh, also, Keith Gooch's uh, favourite part of the podcast. Uh, on, only on the rare week that I come <laughs> yeah. up with something interesting. Anyway, yes. the name of the game here is I've got a great big tome of fab facts. Yes, you uh, have. It's multi-page, multi-hundred page, and mm. uh, I flick through it every week. Richard shouts fab at a random point. That stops me flicking the pages, and within those pages, hopefully, is a fab fact that at least I will deem to be fab, and maybe yes. many more will too. So, yes. uh, Richard James, are you ready? Uh, I think I am ready, yes. Uh, Then here comes the book of fab facts. Fab! (sighs) Hmm? Well, we got past that sticky bit from last week, which is rather nice. Have you still not sorted that out? Uh, No. Uh, Hmm. If anyone knows of a good sort of uh, page lubricator, then do uh, email us podcast at jerryanson.com. Now, here at the Jerry Anson podcast, Mm -hmm. Dickie Jiminy's... Uh, Right, yes. We do love... 
Oh, a here we bit go. of unwanities, don't we? We do, that's true, yes. Uh, we always have heartwarming appreciation for our listening folk uh, who all sit around a computer <laughs> book or mumbly phone and <laughs> listening to the Jerry Anson audio plod. Yeah, uh, that's true. Deep that's joy true. all round. So, deep joy. Uh, listening folk, we are always very fond of you uh, and we hope you're f- fond of this fabby fact. Oh. Uh, if you're not familiar with unwanties, um, don't you worry. You probably switched off, yeah. You haven't gone what? mad. <laughs> Neither have I. It's just some nonsense gobbledygook that uh, entered Entertainer Stanley Unwin used to speak. Now, he was the star of Dad's series, The Secret Service, uh, where he was a priest spy who foiled the enemy with, with his unusual way of speaking. Uh, that uh, Unwinese thing, which I just tried to do there very poorly. Yeah. Um, and that yeah, only great. lasted for 13 episodes back in 1969. Uh, Anderson fans who remember the show love to impersonate Unwinese, don't they? Uh, oh, Jiminy's. yes. Always yes, of course they do. giving us the names of various series and Unwinese, like uh, Cappy Sublet. Uh, space Polly Rosers, Terry Horns, oh, yeah. Flexibold yeah. XL5, etc. <laughs> and of course, Moon Base Bang Bang 1999 tonight. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. So, yes. Uh, but anyway, how did Stanley Elman come up with such a thing as on my knees? Um, yeah. The answer is threefold, and might bring deep joy to your eyeballs. I'm sure uh, it will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm, I'm not really sure I should t- attempt this next bit. Go on, read on, to. read on. <laughs> In the first play, Kay, when our Heronius Stanley was a wee chappy, not knee-high to a knee-hopper. Uh, yes. I mean, in the first place, <clears throat> oh, when see. our hero Stanley was a little boy, yeah. uh, his mother came back from the shopping explaining that she had philolloped in front of a tram <laughs> and grazed her knee clappers. <laughs> this is very much like something we said last week, which is not is to rather. be respo- no, never again. Uh, repeated. No. Anyway, no. perhaps this gift was of wordplay was inherited. Stanley reminded his mother that there was no such verb as philolop, but filed it away for future use. Now, during a stint at Plessy's, the electronics company, Stanley was testing out a new oscilloscope. Mm-hmm. Every day, his supervisor would stroll past and ask, any joy, Stanley? To which he would reply, no joy. <laughs> Until one fateful day when the error device was put working again, he replied, joy, deep joy, his boss expla- exclaimed. Uh, and Stanley made a note of that catchphrase too. Wow. And it all came together after Stanley became a parent. Getting bored of reading the same bedtime stories over and over again, he decided to change it up uh, and read them in different voices. Instead of saying once upon a time, he would say... Once upon a polytito, no, wouldn't he oh. say? Once upon a no, I can't even say it without <laughs> once on. upon. He would say <laughs> once a polytito, and a new language was born. Stanley went on to be a regular guest on television, radio, and film until his death in two thousand and two. But what did his yeah. children think of hearing their bedtime stories in such uh, mutilated phraseology? Well, according to the archived website stanleyunwin.com, the reaction was, "Tell it properly." <laughs> <laughs> They're never happy, are they? No. They're never happy. Ungrateful little oaks, the children. Anyway, uh, there you go. I mean... Now, uh, it's very sweet. Uh, I think we've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. The wonderful Stanley Unwin's gravestone. Uh, have you, did we read out the inscription last time when we talked about Stanley Unwin? Uh, uh, I've got it here. It well, says, In so. loving memory of Stanley Unwin, engineer and entertainer in radio, television and films uh, from 1911 to 2002, and his dear wife also, Frances Anne, from 1916 to 1930, uh, 1993, reunite in the heavenly bode, deep joy. Oh, that was it. Lovely. Isn't that lovely? Mm. On his gravestone. Yeah, nice, isn't it? I think you can find that at a place called Long Buckby. Oh. Long Buckby. So if you're passing in Northamptonshire... Pop in and pay your respectables. Yeah, respectables, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah well, isn't that lovely? So, I mean, anybody yeah. who's not in the Secret Service, I think we've gone completely mad now. Um, yes, <laughs> probably. Yeah, but don't worry <laughs> because now we've done the gospel fab, we will be proceeding henceforth to the Andy Bold news, 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 news. Uh, some interweb wordings and twitterings from our listening folks, and yes, Easterings and Twitty plots are plenty. Uh, upon complete most, we'll be receiving the musy thoughts and chastens of our interview either day, uh, Malcolm E. Garrett. And finally, our audio, audio plot will terminate with the scrambly scramble box from Chrissy Dayload. So. <laughs> You can look forward to all those things coming up at the end of this Fab Facts. How do you do that? How do you, you've got it all written down, haven't you? That's how you do it. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there is a, oh, a, a, right, a script right. which I'm reading from very poorly. Uh, <sighs> anyway, uh, that's it. I can't do any more of this. Um, knees is done. So that's the end of this week's Fab Fact. Fab Fact!
fabulous facty mold. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, lovely. Deep I joy. love giving. Yeah, it's so nice when we mentioned Stan Dion because he was a big part, obviously, uh, of that series. It wasn't a huge success, I, th- I think it's fair to say. But, no, it um, was not. No, but still has its fans. And uh, he was a great entertainer and engineer as well, as it says on his gravestone, which is yes. really interesting. I didn't realise the really deep joy came life. from the yeah. oscilloscopes. So that's rather lovely. No, no. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Uh, now, people, you'd be surprised to hear, have been getting in touch, Jamie. Uh, really? We haven't put them off yet? I know. No. Uh, they've been emailing us, a podcast at jerryanderson.com, like James Morris, who says this. Hi, Richard and Jamie. I've been, like so many, a big fan of many of the shows, from Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet, to, to my favourite, Space Precinct. Now, when I was a child, I had all the toys from the figures to the Space Cruiser. Also, my mum remembers how she used to work so hard to get all the Thunderbirds on the Tracy Island set when they came out in the 90s, even to the point of going to Toys R Us to line up before it opened. Uh, cool. When it did, she was happy to get the very last Tracy Island and Thunderbird 2 toys. Amazing. I've started to build the new Thunderbird model kits and ask, will we see more model kits such as the Eagles, for example, from Space 1999 or Supercar, or maybe even some of the vehicles from Captain Scarlet? Uh, P.S. I love the podcast, and I think it would be funny to get Chris his very own torchy figure. All the best. Many thanks, James Morris. Yeah, how, how, <laughs> how we'd all love our own torchy figure. Oh, yeah. To throw in the fire. Uh, yes. yes uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much. Lovely. Uh, I mean, uh, Space 1999 Eagle kits have been yep. out aplenty for many years. Mm-hmm. Uh, round two um, out in the US, and we bring them over and sell them on the Jerry Anderson store. I think there may be some Eagle kits still uh, available now. So there are lots of Eagles around. I believe there are some other interesting kits coming in the near future too, so keep an Ooh, eye out. Great. Obviously, a great way to find out about those is by downloading the Ander app. Ah. Ah. Just go onto your uh, app store of choice, whether you're on iPhone or Android, and search Ander app, A-N-D-E-R-A-P-P, and download it for free there and find everything in one place. Great, great. Uh, now, we've been going for years, haven't we, Jamie? Two, uh, 196, years, seven yeah. podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is 197. Uh, it is, uh, okay, right. But people are still, would you believe it, discovering us, even now. Uh, amazing. Emma got in touch to say, hi, Richard, Jamie and Chris. Uh, just a quick email to say thanks for brightening my Mondays. I found your podcast in October when I got seconded to another station with a 90-minute commute home. Ah, Gosh. Yes, and started picking a podcast at random to listen to when stuck in traffic. I get super excited every time I get a notification for the new podcast, although it now lasts a couple of days. Now I'm back at my base station, so may never catch up completely. What? Ah, you've got a lot to get through. I don't think you realise, says Emma, how much your podcast makes me laugh and allows me that sense of escapism from the real world, especially in the current climate. I keep meaning to send an email to say thank you. Keep doing what you do. You're all amazing. Thank you so much from Emma. Isn't that lovely? It's very lovely. And it's always, you know, very gratifying and lovely yeah. to hear these things. So yeah. very happy to brighten your day. And uh, yeah. apologies for the unmanese. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, this, ah, now this is interesting. Oh, it's uh, from Jeff Tilly. Ah. Now, Jeff Tilly, why, why you say that as if you're close personal friends? Well, Jeff came over, I think, for Andacon 2014, all the way from Australia, Fantastic. I seem to remember. Okay. Uh, I, th- I believe I'm right in the location anyway, his geography, right. aren't I? Great, great. Well, mm. Jeff says, hi, Jamie and Richard. I've been listening to and reviewing podcasts from exactly three years ago. Oh, dear, Uh-oh. Jeff. Yes. He says, you get some amazing tidbits of information. In one, there was exclusive news mm. of a Einstein Terror Hawks game right. in the works. Sadly, unless I missed it, says Jeff, it never came to be. You're quite right, Jeff. Is that it- true? Yes, yeah, sadly so. I mean, I, I had a playable mm. version on my uh, computer. Uh, right. And then sadly, the, the, the nice chap who was doing it just vanished. Um, ah. And I chased chased a few times and he just disappeared. I don't, don't know what happened. So if you're listening, no. nice chap who was doing the Terrorhawks and Einstein game, do get back in touch because we'd love to see it at some <laughs> yeah. point. Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. Uh, in another, says Jeff, Jamie teases a thumb drive he had with video media from the Jerry Anderson lecture tour, which in time, he said, will be posted on the YouTube channel. I wonder if that was morphed to use in the documentary. Uh, it was not, but it was posted for Anderson Insiders. Oh, OK. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, but since yep. then, we've actually come across more recordings of the lecture tour, which give us some better audio and better video. So uh, uh, who knows? In due, in due course, hopefully we'll see that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, however, he continues, there is a question that Jamie was asking for information about, but I'm not sure if it was ever resolved. It was regarding the tiger moth flown in Thunderbird 6, which was, for a time, housed at White Waltham Airfield, which isn't so far from me, actually. He says, Jamie asks if anyone knows where it is, hoping to track it down. Well, says Jeff, using Google search, here's what I discovered. From this particular website, it shows that the craft is still registered. From another website, it shows as active, which is consistent with the other website, and it's listed listed against Reading Flying Group since April 2000. However, another source states the latest owner as West London Aero Club at White Waltham. There is a 2011 photo on this page from the Moth Club Rally at Beaver Castle, indicating it was flying 11 years ago. Upon looking deeper, I found photos of the plane which were taken at the de Havilland DH Moth Rally at Woburn in 2015, less than seven years ago. Just when I was about to give up, I think I found it, says Jeff. <gasps> see for yourself when you see the familiar registration number on the listing. And he posted a picture of the very plane. Amazing. Three years late, he says, but I hope this cold case mystery is now a little bit warmer. FAB from Jeff Tilly. And actually... For £199, you can book that plane for a 30-minute biplane pilot lesson. Amazing. So, there you go. It's out there, and you can fly it. Do you think they'll let you fly under a bridge on the motorway? <laughs> uh, well, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Of course yeah. you would. I mean, it's it probably, probably a legal requirement that they, they do that in that uh, yeah, particular that's plane. Right. Yeah, oh, that's amazing, isn't it? You can go flying in yeah. Thunderbird 6. Very Absolutely. Cool. Well done, Jeff Tilly, for all your research there. And thank you, everybody who got in touch at uh, podcast at jerryanderson.com. As ever, we love to hear your thoughts, comments. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff happening in the Jerry Anderson universe, as we know, from the upcoming documentary, from the concert, to the comics, to the app, to... I mean, I mean, there's so much to mention. And there'll be more in the news, of course, coming up shortly. And we'd love to hear all your thoughts about all of it. So send it in to podcast at jerryanderson.com and I'll read it out in the future. Very nice. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. That's a great yeah. amount of research, isn't it? That might be Wasn't the most it? researched thing we've ever had on the podcast. So if there ah, was an award there's for a that, challenge. I would give yes. I would give you that, Jeff. So well done. There is a challenge. If you can think of anything that uh, deserves greater research, you can put it into an email, <laughs> send it in. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's see what will happen there. Podcast at jerryanderson.com. Yeah. Anyway, while yeah. we're waiting for that, and maybe to give you some inspiration, let's have some Jerry Anderson news. <gasps> Hooray! Yes, your usual dose of Jerry Anderson newsy news. Newsy news, 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 news. news, 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 news. news. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, well, let's begin uh, thusly. Let's start with badges. App exclusive badges, in fact. The Marcus Stamps designs that you may have seen on the recent t shirts. You know those, they're rather lovely. Uh huh. Uh, they are out as badges that you can exclusively buy via the app for now. Now, from this Wednesday, you can get them on the store, Thunderbirds 1 to 5. We just want to give do some sort of special things for those who download the app because we appreciate you kind of bringing us into your, your smartphone lives. However, in May, Thunderbird 5 will be coming and that will be an app only Ooh. badge exclusively via the app. So that's the only way to get that. Now, I, I, I knew there'd be some people saying, where's my Thunderbird 5 badge? Well, it'll be coming in May. So uh, stand by for that. Jerry Anson Life Uncharted news. Uh, the BFI premiere screening is on its way to being sold out. I think there are just over 100 tickets left, so it's about 75% sold. Uh, we would love to see you there if you can make it. London on the 9th of April, 3pm, with a Q&A afterwards with me and uh, Ben Field, the director. The press screenings are starting to be seen, so you may start to see some sort of preview reviews coming soon, and hopefully they'll get you rather excited about it. We'll see some of you as well at the Birmingham screening. Um, we've got more dates being announced. Uh, there's one in Uckfield coming up. I think also possibly Worcester, Sheffield and beyond are on the, on the list, so more on those very, very soon. Yes, looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Easter weekend, obviously following the premiere on the 9th of April, I really hope we're going to see you at the Electric for the screening of uh, A Life Uncharted on that Friday evening, but also for the rest of the stuff on the Saturday, the live podcast. You can come and watch that. Uh, we hope to see you there. That'll be jolly fun. Richard, Chris and I will be there, perhaps with some special guests as well. Oh, that's exciting. And afterwards, a screening of Thunderbirds Argo, the 1966 movie, and then obviously the concert in the evening. The concert's uh, still got a few tickets left, so do pop along and get that. You can get them from ander.sn slash tickets. 
Those of you who are UFO fans, the UFO Comic Anthology Volume 2 is coming up for pre-order very, very soon. I think possibly even this Friday. Packed with all the stuff from TV Action and a load of other goodies too, the pre-order will go live from the end of this week and uh, will be arriving late April or early May. Final dates to be confirmed shortly. Great! If you were hoping to get a Thunderbirds calendar, I know we're already coming up for April, but they are gone. That is it. They're all finished. What?! So what do you want to see for next year? We'd love to know your thoughts. Do you want a Thunderbirds calendar again? Do you want more Super Mario Nation? Do you want live action? Do you want a mixture? Email us podcast at jerryanson.com and let us know. For those of you who can't make the concert, and I know there are many of you all over the world, or those who can't make it for various reasons because you've already got plans across the Easter weekend, we are making great efforts to make sure we can make it available to you in some way, shape or form. More news on that in the next couple of weeks. And finally, some new t-shirts out today. They are in stock and shipping. Lots of our stuff is print on demand. These are not. These are in inventory and they are shipping now. So there's a shadow t-shirt. Uh, International Rescue, Spectrum, and I think a couple of others. Just have a look at shop.jerryanderson.com for more. Whew, what a lot of news. That's the end of this week's Jerry Anderson News. That was the news. That was the news. Particularly fine voice today. Yeah, well, it's only a few weeks until Podstrons get to sing that for themselves, of course, at our live podcast. Oh, yes, I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> That's going to be great. Uh, yeah. We can do the yeah. fab facts, we can do the yeah. newsy news, news, news. Yeah, yeah. It's all going to be there, isn't it? It's all going to be there. Yeah, I wonder what. Well, I mean, at the current rate of progress, I'm not even sure Chris Dale's going to be there. Now he's what sort is. Of, no. He's, oh, well, dear. Now he's propped up in a, on yeah. a, well, across a wheelchair, not really in. Yeah, he can't no, sit down. Like he's been laid across the, the arms there, isn't he? It's a yeah. horizontal position. Okay, well, dear. fingers crossed he'll yeah. escape from that before the end of the podcast. Mm. Uh, yeah. Have you got any messages from Podsterons or anything like well, that you'd I like to share? I have, yes, funnily enough. If you head on over to Facebook, and uh, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash podstrons or simply search for the Jerry Anderson Podcast official listeners group, you will see a lot of what I'm about to say now. Now, Jamie, the forthcoming Jerry Anderson A Life Uncharted documentary yes. has released quite a flood of comments, as you might imagine. Absolutely. Uh, CJ List. Now, this is an interesting one. Possibly one of the only times I've ever felt, says CJ List, concerned about a documentary oh, I hope I'm proved wrong he says Jerry means a lot to so many people around the world and having a warts and all documentary is both honourable but risky in equal measure well interesting yeah uh, but Ralph Titterton of course who we know and love says I knew Jerry for many years especially during my time on the Fanderson committee and I think that like so many of us he was a very complex man we got on well and I'm proud to still be a friend of his family uh, oh, uh, Titterton says I'm happy yeah, as long as it's honest and fair, which I'm sure it will be. Whitewash documentaries are equally as dull and pointless as hatchet jobs. Well, it certainly isn't that. Uh, Gareth Randall says, I've talked to enough people who worked with both Jerry and Sylvia to know that both of them did things in their personal and business lives that do not reflect well on them. They weren't always nice people. They had egos. They could be self-important and difficult. But that's just the way it is, especially in the industry they worked in. And biographical documentaries that try and ignore the unsavoury aspects aren't being honest. Absolutely. Uh, and finally, Mark Perkins says, uh, it's good to finally get to see a trailer for this. It certainly does its job of whetting my appetite for the full version. Jerry is an ever-present influence in my life, even more so these days than he once was, thanks mainly to the podcast and the lovely friends I've never met, i.e. the Podstrons. I've read his biography and the Made in Super Mario Nation book, so I feel this will now continue my journey towards discovering more about what the man was really like. Absolutely. That's, that's the key, isn't it? Yes. That's the key. Exactly. It's giving you the human side of something, someone who you may have just seen at a couple of conventions or yeah. a photo of and the name above the titles or the name on the end credits. Yeah. You know, that doesn't give you a true impression of, of who and the why and the how. Um, yeah. And those things are really, really important, I think. And also, yeah, I, you know, yeah. just, to, just to get a fully rounded picture. Uh, it's yes you know, uh, let what is it let he who's without sin cast the first stone and all that sort of thing right you know yes. we're all complex we're all uh difficult and i'm sure everyone has done something in their past at least one thing which they think oh dear mm. i wish i hadn't done that i mean you signing up to do this podcast i imagine richard is one of those things <laughs> i mean that's the yeah. biggest regret of my life exactly right there. we all have yeah. regrets Ooh, uh, yeah and i think you know presenting those is just part of showing an honest picture um, yeah. and a nice picture doesn't have to be a bad one 
No, no. And I, I get the fact that people, you know, perhaps have put Jerry, uh, well, not on a pedestal as such, no, but I get degree. that he, 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 he means a lot to a lot of people. But I think... I mean, I haven't seen the documentary, of course, but I should imagine, having seen the documentary, I think they'll love him even more. That's what I get the impression of. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you'll have moments of, I never knew that. That explains yep. that. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you know, feeling sorry for him, feeling happy for him, feeling proud for him. Yeah. You know, all sorts of emotions which you probably will never have previously connected with the name Jerry Anderson. So I, I think yeah. that's really important for people to yeah. to understand. And obviously, Absolutely. I'm, you know, I'm trying to do my best to present a fair picture to understand him better from a personal point of view. Um, yeah. I, I'm certainly not out to do him or his legacy any harm. Um, no. I, I just, you know, want people to see him as, as, a, as a human being. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Uh, moving on from the documentary, Harry yes. Blythe says, uh, I wish Jamie would reconsider releasing GFI. I'm keen to see it, he says. Not because I think it's going to be any good. In oh. fact, he says, I'm absolutely certain it's appalling, but because it's a document of Jerry's overall creative story, a story that I've been invested in since childhood. Jamie, why are you withholding this amazing historic <laughs> program from, from us? Um, well, I, I can't actually say what I really think of it on this podcast. Uh, no, it, it's because at least even with something like The Investigator, you know, yeah. it showcases some some skills and some expertise which, had, you know, uh, come through the, the Super Mario Nation era and he was fully in charge of it. Even if it was bad, even if it went wrong, yeah. it was something that he was fully in charge GFI was uh, was mostly animated in in Russia actually, um, yeah. at a very very different time to now. But um, yeah. a lot of it was out of his, his control. It went more and more out of his control, and it was something which he was very unhappy about in the end. Ah, um, yeah. It was supposed to mark a kind of exciting return to form and be part of that swathe of kind of Saturday morning kids cartoons of the late eighties and early nineties, and it ju- it just didn't go that way. And so the the pilot. Yeah, called Warming Warning. Uh, again, quite um, prescient, really. Mm, it, yes. It, 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 it's great in theme, but very poor in execution. So uh, I have no intention of it going anywhere. However, you may see a very brief glimpse of it if you look uh-huh. very carefully uh, in the documentary. <laughs> so, <laughs> of course. There great. you go. That's better than nothing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roger Smith posted, just finished the excellent Stingray Monster of the Deep. But after hearing the interviews, it looks like there are no more Stingrays to come. Not for now, because there were only ah. two Thaden books. Uh, yeah. But there may be some interesting audio news coming soon. Ooh, so who okay. knows? You'll have to wait and see, yeah. won't you? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, Tom Hodden says, uh, what will you be doing while listening to tomorrow's podcast? Uh, and then he answers himself by saying, Richard and Jamie uh, are one of the safer podcasts for me to have on while cooking or doing other kitchen work. More than once, I've had to hurry to close the window when naughty language or not safe for work themes are discussed on other podcasts. Well, that would never happen here, would it? I don't think I've ever been not safe for work. No. Uh, CJ List says, I think I might have to start listening to the podcast on release day. Lately, I've been gaming while listening to it. Gary Hodgkinson says he listens at work. Andrea Boot says the commute is when I pod. Makes a packed train that much more bearable. Uh, Mm. Ian Stevens says, chilling on the sofa, I expect. While Jonathan Bell says he'll be having a good run and listening to the podcast. Right, good, Jonathan. Keep those knees up. And now, finally, well, I've mentioned Tom Hodden, haven't I? Oh, you said the T uh, word. Yeah. Well, it must be time for another quick fire five. <laughs> yes, it's time for another one of Tom Hodden's amazing quick fire fives. It's quite a quick quick fire five Ooh, this week. Okay. Are you ready for these? I'll yep, do number my best. one. Firefly or the mole? Mole. Eagle or interceptor? Eagle. Hudson or an SPV? No, SPV. Oh, Thunderbird 2, Thunderbird 3. 2. Sidewinder, Crab Logger. Sidewinder. Oh, really? And that's the end of this week's Quick Fire 5. Gosh. That yeah. Was, yeah, that was quite intense. Quite. It was, I could tell. I need a little lie down after all that. <laughs> there you go thanks once again to Tom Hodden and thank you to everybody for posting uh, on our Facebook group as ever we keep it civil and we keep it polite and we respect each other's opinions absolutely and we remember that it's okay to like something and not to like something else isn't Absol- that the case absolutely I'm more yeah. than happy for any of you to love Joe 90 while I don't love it uh, and equally <laughs> I'm more than happy for all of you to hate Terrorhawks when I love Terrorhawks it's just, oh. just a bit of variety isn't it 
Yeah, absolutely. What we Plenty need. for everyone. what we need in life. Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, speaking of variety, let's have part two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, same yeah. interview as last week. <laughs> okay, yeah, great. Let's do that. That's the continuation of my chat with Malcolm Garrett, uh, designer extraordinaire, MBE holder, and uh, well, is hold- it his own MBE that he's holding? I believe so. Yes. Oh, that's all right. Then. Uh, uh, he's got a lovely office full of books and lovely things, which I was watching in the background, uh, and uh, he also has quite the Jerry Anderson collection. So more now from Malcolm Garrett. Going from supercar into Fireball and Stingray. Yeah. Did did you have the sense of, do you know, uh, were you aware that they were all connected by the same person, by the same studio, oh, absolutely. the same outfit? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Super marionation. The- I mean, uh, it, 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 every aspect of the shows was um, uniquely visionary and, and covered. And, you know, that idea that, that um, not only is there a logo for Stingray, and there's a logo for Wasp, who who Troy Tempest kind of dry, you know uh, operates the submarine for, but but the whole TV show is brought to you by Century Twenty One Productions, and it's filmed in Super Marionation. So every every opportunity for uh, graphic design, if you like, and branding, as we'd call it now, to play a part or need it or would play a part, whether you chose to look at it or not and yeah. every opportunity was was followed through in a unique way and in a way that was unique to the shows so that was very very clear and i'm sure that's had a huge huge influence on the design intelligence or the design attitude i brought to to record sleeve design and the mar- and all of the marketing and the publicity uh, that surrounds uh, a band. If you look at my work for Buzzcocks, for instance, the very first band, we would. You know, my designs were extending into the clothes they wear, uh, what the the stage looked like, the badges we did. I I was the, I, I think I was one of the first record sleeve designers at the label to say, I design the adverts, I do the posters, because basically because after the, the first single came out orgasm and it i looked around the streets of manchester and there was a poster with my sleeve on it and i thought and i and i hated the design it's like it, this isn't an affront so i went back to labels don't you dare i'll do the design <laughs> and that was the beginning of that now that is the norm that bands work with with a designer and they take care of the entire graphic environment but that sort of sort of started with me and with others, you know, Jamie Reed with the Sex Pistols and Barney Bubbles with Hawkwind was a, was a huge influence on me. And then Alex McDowell with Rocking Russian and, and he working with Glenn Matlock from the Sex Pistols and many others. And then Peter Savile with Factory Records, of course, who did it the best. Um, that all had its origins in what I saw and what I kind of just absorbed as mm. the natural way uh, from from the Jerry Anderson shows. So yes, it's I was very very conscious that it was all coming from the same same place. I mean, in parallel, yeah. like, you know, as it got older, you know, in the early teens, uh, then um, James Bond was a huge influence, mm. and and the Man from Uncle, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and then, and then, as I got older, my first crush was on was for Emma Peel, Diana Rigg as Emma Peel in the Avengers. <laughs> and so there was a lot, lot of TV shows, and I, and I think it's I think it's important how uh, that that it was television and not film. I love James Bond was was film, yeah, but but, but it was interesting because James James Bond is an adult uh, proposition. He's he, yeah. you know, he's an adult. You know, he has <laughs> with women. You know, and so that's yes. that's well, not something think that, about that, it. That, that that preteens should know about. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but the, you know, there were James Bond annuals. There were James Bond bubblegum cards. You know, the, 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 there was James Bond was marketed to to eight and nine year olds, uh, and so. And, and I tried to work out. Thunderball was the first Bond film I saw in the cinema. And that came out in 1964 or 65, latest. And um, I was only nine in 1965. And and it was A-rated, which meant you had to go with an adult. But I remember (laughs) going with my mates on a Saturday afternoon. We used to go to the one o'clock matinee. Why did they call it a matinee when it was in the afternoon? And matinee means morning. I don't know. But (laughs) (laughs) but I saw James James 1 Thunderball, which to... 
it, it's interesting, isn't it? The, the your your initial experiences, your initial kind of connection with something is mm. remains remains your favorite. So of Thunderball course. to this day is still my favorite, and and I think Stingray is is probably my favorite oh, because really? because I was getting to a point where I was was not just seeing it, I was watching it and understanding okay engaging yeah. with it yeah yeah so supercar i kind of liked but i was a bit too young so i just remember it fireball xl5 i love the robot especially at the end going home oh oh hang on malcolm i can i can possibly uh surprise you then in that case two seconds ready for this on our way oh amazing amazing so, yeah. well since that was dad doing the robot i've i've just did a little cameo for a, a fireball thing recently. It's perfect, very cool. Perfect. <laughs> what, what a cool robot! Completely oh, made great. of first specs. Yeah, absolutely fantastic looking stunning, thing. Stunning robot. But Stingray did it. You know, it was anything can happen in the next half hour. Mm. And and by then I was getting the love interest. You know, I was seeing the kind of interplay. Yeah, but you see, you, be, you, be, you, be, you, between <laughs> Troy Tempest, who's in love with Marina. Who who can't speak and can't reciprocate, yeah. and and, uh, Atlanta, and Atlanta, Atlanta, the daughter of the boss. I know it's quite it has a crush for Troy, in that, isn't it? And and phones they, is kind of oblivious to everything. <laughs> <laughs> but so 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 I'm getting to an age where I'm beginning to understand that interplay. Yeah, of and course. and then and then if I'm being honest, Thunderbirds became a bit too long. And a bit too formulaic. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah, it was. That fifty minutes was too much for you as a kid. Yeah, was it? and, and it and it, it in some ways it was a bit too self aware. It was trying hard. Okay, we got a new bit of technology. We got this new amazing plane, and and in the first half we kind of set up the disaster, and in the second half we fix the disaster, and so it was sort of a bit. Uh, I mean, I loved it, but but it didn't have you know. For me, it didn't quite have that kind of weird energy that 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 Stingray had, you know, yeah. that, that kind of undersea mean. world and those those strange creatures. And there's a lot the, more heightened. The, the submarine that's a, shaped like a fish, like a piranha. Yeah, I mean, it's just wow. Yeah, so it's a great design, Stingray. I think it's uh, Sting, Stingray often gets sort of forgotten because it's the you yeah. know and, and Im- the building, immediate comparison. The, the headquarters, <laughs> the three cubes with with the, the circular tower above it. Yeah. That that um, architect for Centre Point built a, a, a similar building called Space House just off Kingsway, which is round, and oh, it's just okay. like the top of of Stingray. And interestingly enough, it's just around the corner from my first studio on on Parker Street in uh, in <laughs> Parker Garden. Street. How how appropriate? How appropriate? <laughs> how appropriate? Uh, but then at the beginning of the show, you know, action stations, the whole building sinks into the ground. Yeah. Um. And. I developed a, a, a love of modernist architecture and modernist thinking throughout the sixties. You know, I am I am very much, you know, born in the sixties, uh, uh, and um, both the kind of swinging London sixties, the the clear modernist, you know, uh, futurist idea of the sixties, and the psychedelic sixties. You know, I embrace all bits of that, but that the the Stingray headquarters is is a pure piece of wonderful modernist architecture. It is a beauty. I mean, there's a lot of quite cool architecture throughout the Superman oh, Nation shows. I'd That's say. what I mean by every single detail is thought yeah. through. You know, every aspect, you know, from, you know, obviously the machines that the, there's always a central machine, isn't there? Oh, except Thunderbirds, you've got five of them. Yeah. Uh, and then, but then you've got a, a great set of characters. You know, that's that's the scripting of those characters is really inventive. And then, as you say, all the detail, the sets are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then, then the plot lines are amazing, really. Yeah. Well, except except Thunderbirds, a bit formulaic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're going to make some enemies there, Malcolm. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. All, I'm, all, I, all I was, sorry, 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 audience. I was just trying to explain that I my love for Thunderbirds, especially Lady Penelope. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? I had a, a sort of girlfriend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, was a bit older uh, th- than me. Uh, we 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 were never an item, but 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 she called herself uh, Lady P b- because because <laughs> her her parents had been involved in the production of the shows. Oh, really? Some some in some way, and she told me 
about, and you'll be able to confirm this or, or deny it. She told me that there were there was a life an actual size replica of Fab One mm. made, and she travelled in it as a kid. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah. So, and so I never believed her. So you're yes. lying to me. There was never a pink Rolls Royce. No, they yeah. made one to promote the first move. The, the Thunderbirds are going right, right. Well, 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 she was somehow connected. Either, either you know, her parents worked on the set of the film or something. I, I, I don't know. I've lost touch with her. You know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but, but. Yeah, but she she, sent, she delighted uh, in telling me that that <laughs> that her connections to Lady Penelope. That is very cool. They sent a model around, as in a, a you know a, a fashion model around oh, with really? the car to do like a national tour, and she was always yes. dressed as Lady Penelope. And there's some great great photos online of the giant one. I think um, <clears throat> it, the car was supposed to drive up to uh, where the premiere was in London, but it broke yeah. down. Because it was, uh, I think, I think, she, I think so. she told me about that. Oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah, confirmed. Yeah. Her name was Lorraine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lorraine. Yeah. If you're listening, yeah, uh, we've confirmed it is true. Uh, so, so you got you got to Thunderbirds and bit long. So did Captain Scarlet then re-engage you because it was a bit darker? Yeah, yeah. I love Captain Scarlet, but but t- to be honest, I was I was, you know, I. I I was getting to be 10 or 11 years old. Bit cool for Captain Scarlet. Uh, not really a bit cool, but, but <laughs> other distractions. Yes, I mean, I still love enough. Captain Scarlet, but, I, but, you know, I wasn't a captive audience. You know, yeah. I was allowed to leave the house. I could go out. <laughs> As, uh, and, and so other things and schoolwork, you know, going to a grammar school and starting to, you know, do other stuff just slowly took me away. And so, so Captain Scarlet was, was I guess, I was going to say it was the last one I watched, but then it wasn't because then I watched Joe 90. Yeah. And then, of course, <laughs> UFO. I love the purple wigs in UFO. Of course. And, and the whole idea of bringing in, in real people and Space 1999 with Martin Landau. I mean, you couldn't, you, you kept on drawing me back. There yeah, was no so escape for me. It, it kind of aged up with you in it a way. Did. And even it when did. you thought you might escape, I, I noticed you carefully skipped over the secret service there. Is that because it, it just didn't cross into your no, radar no, at the it, time? It, it was very brief. And, yeah, and I recently very. bought the DVDs to catch up on it. I've, so I've got the box set of the DVDs. <laughs> How have you found that? I've not managed to put it into the DVD player because I'm too <laughs> bloody busy. Uh, but, but yeah, no, I like, yeah, I like secret service. I, I, all I can picture is, is the guy with the glasses. Who's the actor? Stanley Unwin. Yes, yeah, Stanley Unwin with, it, with it, 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 it. It was sort of a bit left field casting, I thought. It's uh, very strange. I mean, it was really designed for Stanley, the show, because Dad right. wanted, wanted to do something with him. But it's a very odd thing to have a kid's show with a you know an elderly priest as the, yes, <laughs> as the main yes. character. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that wasn't kind of so obvious to me as, as a child, but it was sort of, it was clear that, 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 that it was slightly different. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly yeah. different is probably about the best thing you can say for the Secret <laughs> Service. I'm very fond of it, but it is it is quirky yeah. as hell. Yeah. So just going across the kind of design, the look and feel of all that Supermarination era, Malcolm, Mike, I preempted this before we chatted because I, yes. I, I thought you were the person to ask. A, a lot of people will refer to that, the design of that era, the look, the colour, the typography, all that kind of stuff, and say, oh, it was, it was iconic. Mm. And wrapped up into that is often a kind of um, perception that, the, the design there was super intelligent, super intentional, groundbreaking, uh, and, and was setting a new trend. And I often wonder, is that, in your opinion, certainly the case, or, or is, is that a kind of derivation of the fact that so many designers now grew up watching it, they've ingested it? I'm going to stop you right there. Come on, Ab- come on then. Absolutely it was. I, I mean, I, I've, I've hinted at it or said you, it. You it, certainly it, have. It, it, it's, it's, it was thorough. It's it's what we call branding now. You know, every aspect is considered and thought through, and not in a cynical way, in in a no. kind of witty way, in, yeah. in, in 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 a way to make you think, or or to stop you thinking the wrong things as well. You know, to, to as a graphic designer who grew up with that and was informed by that implicitly, I can now look at things and spot when something isn't right or you know some aspect is not thought through or sticks out like a sore thumb and or is you know detracting from 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 the vision and nothing ever was out of place and 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 that would have been amazing that would have been Mm. amazing if there had have been one show 
Yeah. If they'd just been Thunderbirds, we'd still be talking about it here and now, you and I, we'd be talking about it. The fact that there were three shows in the run-up to that, and the fact that there were, I don't know, countless shows after that, each with their own perfectly formed world and, and vision yeah. and optimism and idealism. And so, so certainly, certainly the, the overall flavor and the overall attention to detail was very influential on me, but mm. also just from a style point of view. I mean, yeah. that logo, Century 21 Productions, <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Yeah. You know, the, it's, and, and it certainly, certainly had a, had a, a, a huge effect on, on, on a huge influence on the way my specific graphic interests and graphic skills uh if i have them um <laughs> developed too modest of course <laughs> of course he does yeah no, no, it, like it, that. It, it's not just nostalgia obviously it is nostalgia for me it's massive nostalgia but there are many other things to be nostalgic i'm not quite as nostalgic as say about doctor who you know i grew up with doctor who i saw the yeah. very very first episode i literally did hide behind the sofa when the daleks <laughs> came on i actually did <laughs> but it got silly you know, af- after the after the second or third Doctor started to get silly, Jerry Anderson was never silly, mm. ever, ever. It was always it was always intelligent. It was always it was always it, it pitched itself above its audience. Yes, absolutely. That's definitely part of the secret in the timelessness. Yeah, it, it was. You know, that, like, I go back to the TV Twenty One comic. It, yeah. it was. It was an adult publication for children. Yes, and that um, that was not lost on me. I no. mean, it, 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 I, I may not have had. I, would, I definitely wouldn't have had the 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 perception to to kind of receive it in that way as a child. But looking back, I could see that's what was going on. You yeah. know, and and so so it's not. For me, it's not about. Obviously, it's a certain amount of nostalgia, but it's not not really about nostalgia. It's 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 not nostalgia for a, for a forgotten time. It's it's nostalgia for not losing that sense of vision and that sense of optimism mm. about the world. But in but in in a in a world that's realistic. I mean, many of those things, many of those toys and gadgets that you yeah. wanted that, that the puppets had on screen you now have absolutely oh, we well, have we're, better we're on one right now on a video we call. are indeed yeah yeah um, you, you yeah. Know, I, I just always i always look just look at the iphone and just think we couldn't have even even your dad couldn't quite have imagined that i mean they they got close well, with, the comp, with the comp, sat right? happily in thunderbirds yeah. Oh, totally. Well, you know, the the, the nearest equivalent, I guess, is is the Comlock in Space nineteen ninety nine with a little screen yes. in it, multifunction. You know, as a as a key. Um, yeah. I mean, I was staying in a hotel the other day where the the app for the hotel turns your phone into the key for the room. Right. So yeah. There, yeah. There's the Comlock for real with the screen with the calling capability, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it <clears> it, it detects you coming down the corridor, so it opens the door as you get yeah. to it. <laughs> That's, it's yeah, yeah the fu- the future has been definitely been or the, the present has been shaped by the past uh, yes. in that way in yeah in unexpected myriad ways. Oh, more Malcolm Barrett. Mm. Ma- Malcolm Barrett. No, it's actually called Malcolm <laughs> Garrett. More Malcolm ah. Garrett to come next week for part three of three. Uh, do you go to Malcolm's website, malcolmgarrett.com. Follow him on Twitter, at Malcolm Garrett, his company, Images Co., or on Instagram, at being Malcolm Garrett. Right. Yeah. Good. Y- nice. You're right. Very yeah. good. Yes. Sorry, I'm just a bit distracted. I'm just writing something down because I just had a thought. But oh uh, anyway, no, it's all right. Uh, mm. I, I mean, I suppose you want to hear from our, uh, you know, people at home, do you? Or, uh, our people or you're not, at home. Or you're, not, or you're not bothered. No, I would love to hear from Podstrons. I always love yeah. from Podstrons. Please, yeah, well, please tell me now. Well, they, they love to tweet us, as we know, and hashtag us, uh, Jerry Anderson Podcast. Mm. And, uh, tag me, Richard and James, and you are, and Jamie Anderson. And him. oh, gosh. He still hasn't moved at all, has he? No, hopefully. Is he going to be free from that for well, the randomizer? I'm going to put a call in and see if somebody can come over and cut him out of it. So uh, yeah. somebody who's got a Anyone little, got little Dremel or saw? something. Well, I was going. Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. Right. You went quite extreme there, and I went quite small. But <laughs> let's see what happens. If it's a circular saw, I think he might lose a limb. 
Uh, yeah. Anyway, what uh, yeah, the sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's Chris Dalek over there. Now, uh, so on Twitter, uh, the Dalek Emperor says, here's my latest appreciation tweet for my favourite Jerry and Sylvia Anderson television series of all time, namely UFO from 1970. And he posts a picture of Wanda Ventham and Ed Bishop. Uh, Plaid Stallions said, Toy Ventures on YouTube tonight, we look at the merchandise inspired by one of my favourite science fiction series, Jerry Anderson's UFO. A lot of UFO I love out there, isn't there? And of course, the great thing about Twitter is it's the perfect place to find all these various quite obscure podcasts you might not always stumble across, uh, who occasionally dip into the worlds of Jerry Anderson and review the odd series I or do. the odd episode like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caroline Whitehead said, Ah, oh, this is breaking news from last week in the worlds of comics. It's just been announced that this officially licensed comic anthology is coming later this year from Time Bomb Comics in conjunction with Anderson Entertainment. And Dan Whitehead will be writing the iconic terror hawks yes now i'm guessing you've seen it jamie i've i've seen it and approved it and it's all good to go Whoa. yeah it's great looking lovely i bet yeah the art's lovely the stories are great across the set so i think you're gonna love it mm. uh the lovely mark dando of course who we know and love greatly has just said is it just me uh, or do the new totem signage on the crossrail elizabeth line have a jerry addison space 1999 look and feel to them And he posted a couple of pictures, and he's right. So if you find yourself on the uh, Elizabeth line in London, take a look and, uh, yeah, tweet a picture. David Monday says, wow, it looks as if a life uncharted will be even more emotionally powerful than anyone could have expected. I can't wait to watch the full film. Oh, thanks, David. Yeah, and I'm I'm really looking forward to sharing it with everybody. Yeah, Um, yeah. It will be, so definitely bring your hankies. Oh, right, yeah, great. Uh, So, yes, tweet us and hashtag us, Jerry Anderson Podcast, and I'll read them out next time. Hmm. Fantastic. Mm. Yes. Mm. Email us. Send some things in. We'd love yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ah, now. What? What now? You see over there, Marina oh, yes. has come to Chris's aid. Oh, and thank has goodness. cut him free. Yes. And uh, right. I, well, she's just coming over to explain what's what's been going oh, yeah. on. Oh, what's she? Ah. Right. What? Ah, okay. No, I couldn't hear that. Now, unfortunately, it seems that Chris has been attempting to do a sort of an insurance scam. Right. He'd, oh. uh, he'd approached uh, Zelda of Guck's company, Mames Direct, uh, okay, okay. Uh, and was hoping to get a payout for uh, an alleged accident that took place oh, while flying an eagle. Chris. So Chris. that'll teach you, Chris. So he's looking yes. very, very sorry for himself, as he, he should. Is. Marina's quite yeah. embarrassed. But um, <gasps> yeah, well, hopefully, Chris, you can make up for it with uh, this week's randomizer. Make it a good one. Oh, oh, no, not Mars. No, no, Zelda. No, 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 Round red bit round 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 red red round round yep 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 book 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 earth book book earth book oh oh biscuit biscuit yep 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 biscuit yep 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 oh 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 no bite no bite no 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 no, 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 book, book, earth book. Oh, button, 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 push, push, button. Oh, 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 button, push, button, yep, 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 random, yep, 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 paper, paper, oh, oh, Joe. So, after a uh, fairly intense two-parter, a, a fortnight of two-parters with the bringers of wonder, 
Welcome back to the randomizer Joe 90 and uh, also welcome back to the randomizer Joe 90 after a, a, a fair few weeks of the podcast being a bit mean to old Joe I would say uh, as it often is unfortunately but there have been some biggest plane I've ever seen Uncle Brett specific comments made oh, Joe it's an OGT so shut your mouth glide transport the world's most advanced concept in aerospace passenger transportation. But here I am, always ready to defend Joe 90, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, it always makes me so happy. I was thinking that again, just watching the opening titles. Despite the fact that this episode is, um, you know, it's, I don't think it's the, the finest uh, example of the series by a long way. Complete motors 1 to 12. But it's still very enjoyable. Uh, I, this is another one. Cabin temperature normal. Pressure, normal. Where I can say I have uh, fond, nostalgic memories of this from the VHS days. Gyros set on course. Yes, I've spoken a lot about VHS, and this was uh, an episode I, I got on a tape, ex-rental from the library. There are, of course, other countries uh, developing an orbital glide transport brand. One other country. About a year behind us in development. We won't name that country. It's a foreign land stand. Share of trouble on ground tests. Yes, I had this on uh, on a videotape with See You Down There and The Birthday, both of which we've already covered, and Mission X41. So I watched this over and over and over. I have discussed over and over and over my memories of uh, VHS era problems, the agony of, of choice. But this, as I said, it was X Rental from the library. I got this with a Stingray tape. Joe? It was annoying, actually. I remember the Stingray tape. A young guy named Dr. Slade. Is he good? packaging was I think for volume 9 and I had the tape for volume 6 in the box but this was Joe 90 volume 8 it was actually volume 8 in the box you operate a standard screening procedure for all personnel before each ground test we checked and double checked every man on the project and came up with nothing no so this time should I say nothing can go wrong a computer in the launch control building Ooh. Slade knows about the computer but even he doesn't know where it is. So we're about to launch an experimental plane. Whether it's a design fault or sabotage. And the computer can pinpoint who in launch control is responsible. Ooh. Yes, it's it's kind of a hybrid plane and spaceship. OGT, Orbital Glide Transport. And we have some um, or control personnel in a bunker. Led by this chap, Slade, played by the Macy puppet. With, I think, three technicians. Yeah, three technicians. Green. Check. But something that will come into play... Secondary automatics. Oh. All green. That's an interesting shot of a puppet's either leg or bum. Uh, they were showing the, the hidden computer, which is just under a desk, flashing away like crazy. Um, yes, they've, they've placed the launch control building right in a direct horizontal line from the launch ramp. Seven. Six, As we are about to see, four, three, that's not a very good plan two, one, for an experimental plane. But that's that's by far the least of this uh, this plane's problems, as we're about to see. Release all umbilicals. And I do like the the look of this thing, the hybrid nature of it. You know, it's, it looks like a plane, but it's got these rockets attached to it, taking off from a launch ramp, um, similar to to XL5 in a way. I also remember this turned up as a spaceship on, on a, a, a TV-21 cover, I want to say. She's not really moving yet. Go on. Go on! I hear you, Mr. Johnson. I was just taking a moment to warm up, but now I'm moving. Uncle Brad. But not fast enough, Joe. Slade, close down all motors. Say again? An all-motor shutdown, Slade, now. Yes, I believe this plane has no crew. Uh, is guided entirely by computer. Close down. Malfunction on five, Doctor. Can't shut out. Oh, bother. Emergency clamps into position. Yeah, emergency clamps. This will stop it. These, I love these. These tiny little bits of metal. No red alert. That are supposed to stop this runaway Leviathan plane. And here we go. Well, that's the emergency clamps taken care of. And now the plane is swooping off the launch ramp. Do you know, it's heading straight for the launch control building. <laughs> I like that insert shot of the uh, of Slade and all the technicians inside, covering their heads with their hands. Slade, are you all right? Yes. Well, okay. He's okay. We've got a lot of emergency people on the way. Get your men into the ejection capsule immediately. 
And really, it's a nice setup for a Thunderbirds episode. We have this. Team be able to get out, Dad. As long as the rocket doesn't ignite. But if that happens, the launch control building becomes one huge concrete oven. Oh, there's a cheerful image. Yeah, this plane balanced very precariously on the edge of the launch control building. We've got people trapped inside. Hurry, Doctor. Don't wait for me. I'll take the reserve escape capsule. Slate doesn't want to come along. Down, you'll be sealed in here. It's a risk I have to take. It's my responsibility to salvage launch data. Interestingly, there are three technicians. Oh, the capsule. But we only see two in this capsule. So either... I mean, it's a curved capsule, so it might just be that we can't see one, the other guy, from that angle. Or it could be that the third one died. But I think that's unlikely. We don't see a body anyway. The roof has now caved in on the launch control building. So having got the technicians clear, Slade is trapped inside. And it's a nice uh, interior set for that launch control building. Lots of familiar computer banks and, and the, those lovely um, spool tape computer bank things. Dr. Slade, are you receiving? Which of course turned up in, uh, in UFO on the walls of Skydiver. Why didn't he use the reserve escape capsule? He could be trapped in the rubble. I like that... Mac and Joe have both worn suits for this occasion. Slade will never get through that. Which means we can't recover the concealed monitoring equipment. Right. And this map they're standing in front of, I recognise this map from Captain Scarlet. We need outside help, Mac. I don't think it's the um, Frostline defence map which turned up a few times. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this was a map just created for this series. I seem to recall it was in Attack of the Tiger. Anyway, Mr. Johnson, manager of the, uh, the plane what has crashed. Mr. Weston. World intelligence is not a rescue outfit. We're I know these other guys who are capable of doing that. They're called Spectrum. Aspects involved, the computer findings. If we don't get to that, this country's lead in the OGC race goes out the window. We'll I thought we were building an OGT. What's an OGC? Tomorrow, but until then, we can only cut a 14-inch bore. No man would be able to slide down a 14-inch bore. But a boy could, Mr. Weston. Exactly. Ah. It's a tough one. That aircraft could slip at any time causing a spark which would ignite the fuel. And if it that sounds dangerous enough to send Joe. And he sounds like he's up for it. Let's do it. Brad Johnson's concealed computer. The heat would destroy all the data in the crash. And five years' design and development on the OGC would be lost. Even if OGC we... again. Hang on. I'm, right, I'm going to check that. I'm sure he says it's not a plane, Joe. It's an OGT. Orbital Glide Transport. One who also knows how to use explosives. What's it? Where's OGC come from? Sir? Doesn't exist. No problem. Uncle Brad worked behind enemy lines during the last war. With whoever it was. Expert. You mean we could give Joe Brad Johnson's brain pattern? Why not? Can you think of a better man for the job? I'm sure he won't mind donating his brain for science. And here's, who's in charge of getting the plane off the building? So far right on schedule, Mr. It's Captain Magenta in a silly hat. No. Ah, meanwhile, Brad Johnson has retired to his office, which is well stocked with booze. Oh, there's that map again. Who called in world intelligence, Mr. Luber? Lots of arrows flashing all over the place. It's the best thing that's happened in a very bad day. You're w a very handsome fellow. I'm quite excited to meet you. But there's one condition. Once that drill has done its job, I want the whole area cleared. Uh, he's brought his suitcase with the, uh, with the obvious antennae for which he can transmit Brad Johnson's brain no. back to the big rat. Thus, they have another person's thoughts and experience Maximum security clamp. under their control. I'm afraid it'll have to include you too, Mr. Johnson. But surely I can help. Oh, uh, you'll be helping, Mr. Johnson. We can promise you that. It's very unethical. you got to say it. It's very unethical. I I would love to know if, if years down the line, not only what happened to Joe, which I think is the primary long-term concern, but if this ever came out, the, the public outcry of having your brain illegally recorded like this. Okay, Dad. I'll get into the big rat. And it's 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 a shame, or almost a shame, that the show never explored that in some way. Because this is a, f a more sophisticated and mature show than than some of the earlier ones. Worse, we've already so it wouldn't be out of place. This area. The fact that they never raise the the question is is just deliciously uh, deliciously wicked. Moved from base area. Each man to be checked clear personally by the base security officer. What's it all about, Mr. Johnson? They're my orders too, Chief. We're completely in the dark here. All we know is that we've been assigned a special man for the job. Ah. See, he said man, 
that's actually a boy. But you know what? It works. I love that. I like that, um, you know, juxtaposition. I think the fact that you don't have long to dwell on it because you just go straight into the happy music. Oh, this show. This show. Even an episode like this, which, as I said at the start, it's not a bad episode. It's, it's I would say, a thoroughly average episode of the series. It just makes me so happy. I love watching Joe 90. This is Joe. Now, let's get Dr. Slade and that computer. So, we're now cutting a, a borehole into the building. Yeah, I like the look of this as a, a setup for a Thunderbirds episode, even if the... You know, the, the rescue equipment that they've brought in doesn't look particularly futuristic. Come in, Dr. Slade. This, this control room set more than makes up for it, though. I think there's some medical equipment scattered through here. Oh, the um, cloud-based lounge chairs are also here, which Come in, Dr. Slade. I think had first been seen in Thunderbirds Argo. And oh, there he is. Not until I've found that computer. And just that sudden cut to him standing there, completely unharmed. Because that puppet played so many Mysterons, almost for a moment, I'm inclined to think, he's a Mysteron replacement. You'll have to assume the worst. He's a Mysteron replacement. Thanks a lot, Chief. The mining team, they've just broken through. The problem's all yours now, Sam. But for the life of me, I can't see how you're going to handle it. Leave it to us, Mr. Johnson. Okay, Sam. Now, you know where the computer's located. Hmm, I also know where the booze is. That's what I'm going to start on first. There ...who will understand my programming. Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. We plan to use someone who will understand it as well as you would yourself. What I mean is we've stolen your mind. But don't worry, we'll put it to good use. Ah, there he goes. Hold it! Joe is being lowered into the borehole. A, sh a shot of Mac kneeling as Joe is lowered in almost makes it look like the puppet's got no legs. See when you are. Okay, Sam. Yeah, he's, the puppet hasn't got the bulk to make that look particularly realistic. Anyway. There's Joe's feet. Followed soon by the rest of him. Weather forecast can hardly be worse, Mac. Electric storms approaching the vicinity. Oh, it would be. And this episode was also mined for clips for uh, an episode of Done, Joe. A Rory Bremner's show at the time. I think the clip is still on YouTube of uh, um, John 90, of uh, Joe having been given the brain pattern of uh, John Major. Yeah, they use a lot of clips from this episode, and I get the feeling it was just they'd asked for an episode of Joe, and this was the one they were given, this and Most Special Agent. So they had to make the, the best of it. Ah, it's Murphy. There's a, na there's a name on the crane I've been trying to make out all this time. About lightning is the last thing we need. But thanks to Hive Definition, of course, we can see it. Yes, Murphy's Cranes are here to help. I can also see... I, I can't remember what they're called. Is it, is it sprues? What do you call the, the things that the, the parts of a model kit come in? Once you've pushed out the model pieces, they would sometimes reuse those those holder bits. There's some of those on the outside of the launch control building. Look, I know this sounds crazy, Mac, but there's no sign of him. I mean, there's piles of rubble and debris everywhere. I suppose he could be buried, but... Joe! I haven't seen any blood. This slade must be trapped under the debris. I don't see any other answer, Mac. So I'm coming back up. Oh, no, he's hiding. Find the computer. Looking very sinister. There's something else this puppet is very good at doing. As you can. And again, I think I've discussed this before. The reason that puppet played so many Mysterons... Hurry it up, Joe! ...is because he had the ability... To, he had a blinking head so he could uh, close his eyes, which he'll be doing later on in this episode. Anyway, Joe has now found the computer, and he's also found... Hold it there. Dr. Slade! Come in. What's a kid doing down here? I'm a WIN agent. Part of my job was to rescue you. I see now I shouldn't have bothered. Ooh. I never could stand smart kids. Hmm. Now keep your hands off that microphone. Yes, this is all a, a cunning plan of Dr. Slade's. To find the computer that was indicating the sabotage by being in now? the building that had that computer in it and then crashing a plane on top of the building. Who are you? It's a flawless plan. Things convincingly, and then sit back and wait to be rescued. It's all falling into place. You knew about the computer, so why go ahead with the sabotage when you were certain to be found out? This was the test flight. 
I had to ensure it ended in failure. I gambled on finding the computer in the confusion. Hmm, now you found it for being buried alive was all part of the plan uh, it does push credibility to breaking point his his plan part of the ogt wreck i presume not part of it the whole aircraft is balanced on the edge of this building what if it <laughs> and he didn't even know this room hotter than a brick kiln he didn't even know to fall so either he assumed that it missed and only partially hit the building or it was destroyed on impact. Probably the beginning of it. It's a, it's a fairly big risk to take with your life for a, a little computer which isn't that well hidden. Lightning ignites the rocket fuel. You are a clever child, but I don't buy that story. It's too far-fetched, unlike my plan. Excuse me. My guess is you planned for us to wait until a bigger drill was brought up in the morning. A poor guess, Slade. I was going to leave you here to burn. All clear of the escape vent, and to use one of the ejection capsules to get clear. You mean they were entrusting a tricky demolition job to you? What do you know about explosions? I know everything. He's Joe. He's Joe Ninety. What doesn't he know about explosions? He knows a lot about causing them. In precise amounts of explosive energy. Usually with missiles. It can crack an egg without breaking the yolk. Or grenades. Don't talk like a kid. You're in a jam, Slade, and you know it. Uh, despite the ridiculousness of Slade's plan, I do like this this confrontation between him and Joe. Good deal, Sonny. Not when I hold the ace of trumps. <gasps> the ace of trumps. Oh. Fix those charges. Yes, he's, he seems to think that because he's got the gun... He's, uh, he's in control of the situation. I think at this point, the plane is in control of the situation. The plane and the oncoming storm. Joe? That threatens to blow it all to bits. No answer. I don't like it, Sam. I don't like it at all. Oh, well, I think this is a fairly good situation. You know, what's, what's the worst that could happen? Blast rebounds off flat surfaces in the same manner as reflected light. I'd move from there if I were you, Slade. You think I can't see what you're up to? Get me in an exposed position and let the blast finish me. I'm staying put. Hmm. Press that plunger. Well, Don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah. Explosion. No doubt about it. But I believe that Joe has been merciful on this occasion. Come in, Joe. Oh, that's it. Slade is out. Again, he's got his hands over his head. Joe, what's happening down there? A spot of trouble. I found Dr. Slade. Tell you about it when I get out of here. Make it quick, Joe. That's it. The plane is wobbling. Oh, yeah. One end of the launch control building is just crumbling at this point. It can't hold much longer, Mac. And although it's not a like hugely spectacular image, as I said, it is a nice scenario for a rescue operation. It doesn't need to be massive. Hurry, Joe. Hurry. Or a huge special effects extravaganza. Clear. I'm just getting Slade into the capsule. To be a threat. That's right, Mac. Sure, sure. And again, oh, man. some nice Rupert Davies worried acting here. Also with Keith Alexander in strong support as well. Look, I know how you feel, Mac, with Joe down there, but there's nothing you can do to help. Sam, you bring the car up. I'll be ready when you get here. And this is nice. Just this long, slow close-up on Mac's concerned face with that music. It's very effective. Again, it's, it's largely due to the voice actors. Oh, that's it. The building has gone kablooey. Sparks on all the consoles in the bunker. Mac, as soon as you're clear. Eject, Joe. Eject. And they're away to the sound of the Angel Interceptor launch and kaboom. Well, it was a very small kaboom. Not, uh, not a particularly massive kaboom. But hey ho. And there he is. Falling to Earth, he's made it okay. Oh, we still got some more explosions, that's okay. Yep, the plane definitely says OGT on it. So what was all that talk about an OGC? Well, Sam and Mac, did they, did they arrange to go to the rescue of the wrong plane? Somewhere out there, there is an actual OGC that's in, in real trouble. He made it. It doesn't matter now, anyway. Joe is safe, so is Dr. Slade, who is presumably going to go to prison as an agent of unnamed foreign country. Did naughty things. Slade was
was the traitor. I worked with him for 10 years. I can still hardly believe it. I know how you feel. And he's drinking. Yes, he's finally helped himself to the booze. No basic design fault in the OGT. Entirely satisfied. Now the OGC, oh, that's a complete disaster area. Resolved. But a whole lot of others have opened up. What do you mean, Uncle Brad? Well, Joe, such as how Wynn managed to find someone who could handle the computer side and knew enough about explosives to blast clear the ejection vent and was able to get down a 14-inch shaft. And why I hired Captain Magenta to supervise the rescue operation. Something about a boy. A boy? <laughs> well, uh, we can call on operators of all shapes and sizes, Mr. Johnson. Uh, take uh, young Joe here for... Oh, Sam's wearing his happy face. Uh, very good, Mr. Looper. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Could be true, Uncle Brad. You know, I don't wear this badge for nothing. Ooh. So he's just shown him his WIN Most Special Agent badge. You know, at some point, someone has got to with these. Um, oh yes, you 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 said Joe's. You said Joe did it. Oh, 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 oh. At some point, someone has got to twig. At some point, they're going to push that too far, and it's all going to come crashing down. Anyway, that was Test Flight, which, you know, as I say, I I adore Joe Ninety. I adore Joe Ninety. It's a great show. Anyone who doesn't believe so is a silly Billy with a silly head who is wrong. There. I said it. But uh, yeah, g this episode is not the greatest uh, example of the series. It's 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 okay. It's good. It's just nothing spectacular. Nothing I can really get enthused about. So I, I do have fond nostalgic memories, again, from the VHS days of this being one of the few episodes I had access to, um, well, through my teens, really, in the dying days of VHS. But I'll, I'll admit it's not one of the greatest. A nice, I suppose, yeah, a nice guest villain in, in Slade, but a very loopy plan that seems to involve putting himself in absolute mortal danger and just pretending that he's in charge of the situation. So yeah, a likably goofy villain, um, a fairly average episode, but it's still Joe 90. I still love it. Can't help it really. It's great. Ah, well, you must be over the moon. Well, tell you what I really like mm. about Joe 90. Oh, yeah. I really like the music. Yeah. And I really like the different version of the music for the closing titles. Yeah. So it was what? a real pleasure to it? listen to those bits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Chris. Uh, you know, Arsh. Joe 90, meh, fine, whatever. Uh, mm. No, they, they, yeah. Joe has his own merits. Uh, and, and, and if you love Joe, I hope you really enjoyed that randomizer. Anyway, moving on. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, swiftly, by the looks of it. Right. <laughs> uh, um, I'm looking forward to next week's randomizer. Well, it might be another Joe Knighty, of course. We just don't know. That's, it's the, random. that's the great beauty of it being random. Yeah. But at least Chris won't be trying any, any other insurance scams, we can hope. Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, Jamie, tell us about the Terror Hawks Vehicle's complete technical breakdown video that appeared on YouTube. <laughs> Do I have to? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, as you know, uh, the Marvelous AC has produced three series of tech talks for the Jerry mm -hmm. Anderson YouTube channel, uh, starring uh, David Graham in series one as Brains yeah. and Gordon, and uh, Ed Bishop, played by John Colshaw for series two. Uh, yeah. I should say Ed Straker rather uh, yes. than Ed Bishop and uh, John playing Jeff Tracy for Series 3 now um, what Ross has been doing on the, on the YouTube channel is bringing together those tech talks by series so we've already had Captain ah, Scarlet we've had UFO great. now we've had Terrorhawks and next week I believe or the week just gone possibly should be Thunderbirds the complete tech talks so ah, you can enjoy lovely. those yes um, great well yeah, Great watching. The reason, yeah, the reason I mention it is people have been enjoying them. Uh, Comics Lover posted beneath uh, the video on YouTube, uh, note that when this show aired, children didn't care about race or gender. The co-captain of the team was a woman who appeared to share command with her husband. The pilot of the fighter plane was a woman. And if you teach children from a young age that there's nothing wrong with women in command and people of any race working together, they won't know any different. It was a simpler time back then, I guess, says Comics Lover. Uh, Scofair says, brilliant. Seeing this only years later, do I realise what an underrated series Terror Hawks is. Here, here. Ah. Uh, but Amatrine Moon posted, one thing I still don't understand was how they managed to get Einstein's brain connections in the data dump. The eyes are closed and it looks like a grid. Was it a form of MRI? I would like to have seen the theory of how it worked. We also saw in one episode another Stein clone come and take Tiger's brain waves. I'm a scientist myself and I always wondered how it could have been carried out. 
Mm, well, over to you. Obviously, yeah. it's three dimensional uh, atomic resolution MRI. Of course, it is. With uh, quantum wavelength uh, yeah. neuron transmogrification yeah. capabilities. Yeah, Jamie. Remember, they're a scientist. They said they were a scientist. <laughs> so you're not. I think no, you'll find that some of it. those words meant something. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, with all these things, come on, you've got to have that leap, haven't you? Um, yes, 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 of, yes. Of how these things happened. Yes, uh, exactly. But, you know... You have to imagine that they, that they make sense in the world in which they're set. That's what I find. Absolutely. I mean, I'm surprised you're not asking more about the Xeroid's ability to increase mass by, you know, 10,000 times and that kind of thing. <laughs> that, that, yeah. you know, does True. that mean they're making some sort of black hole inside themselves that's contained? I mean, I, who knows? Well, um, yeah. But, uh, yes, I think we've got bigger problems to answer, like how can we make sure Joe 90 doesn't appear on the randomizer next week? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's one of the greatest questions that science will never be able to answer because he might appear next week. Yes, uh, that's the random problem, isn't it? Anyway, let's see what happens. We can we can but hope that it's something else. Yeah. Uh, anyway, do email us your thoughts on all things scientific and non-scientific to podcast at jerryanderson.com. Have you booked your tickets, by the way, for the, uh, the live podcast recording? I do hope so. Mm. Have, have you, Richard? Oh, no, you're going. You're, you're, you're going to be on the well, stage, I, of course. Sorry, I was, yeah. I, was, I was just going to turn up and, you know, with yeah. the Space Bracing T-shirt, and I thought they'd just let me in. Sure. Brilliant. No, no, that's true. That's that's what'll happen. I'll wear my oh, Joe good. 90 T-shirt, of course. Yeah. So yeah. see you there, and uh, maybe Chris will turn up in another full body cast or something. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Yes. Um, right. Is is that the end of this one? Are we, are we done? I think that'll do. Yes, I think it probably will do. Yeah. Uh, I need to make another pot of coffee because I'm running out of caffeine. There's too much uh, blood in my caffeine stream. Uh, So, uh, yes, do leave us a a rating and a review because we haven't had one of those recently. It's rather sad. Oh, really? Does that mean we're underappreciated? Unappreciated? Probably. Yes, yes. That's how I feel. (sighs) Deservedly so. Anyway, that's the end of pod 197. We'll be back for pod 198 next week. We're counting down rapidly to 200. Can't wait to celebrate with you for the 200th episode and also for the live one, which will be around, I guess, 205, 206 maybe. Is it? Yeah, great. Probably. Let's see how we go. Yeah, uh, nice. Right, Richard James, you've got things to do. Yes. I've got things to do. Let's yeah. leave these posturons alone. We'll be in your ears next week. Goodbye. Bye. Stage one complete. Let's go. I mean, I said you've got things to do. Actually, you have well, got things to do. Yeah, I have got I've things to do, yes. I've given you quite a lot of homework recently, I believe. You have. You have given me quite a lot of homework, none of which I can talk about. But I can talk about the Ander app, which I have just this very moment downloaded to my phone. As we were saying have our you? goodbyes there, yeah, yes. I was on the, uh, the the store and I downloaded it. And I'm amazed to see that they've got a live feed that you can subscribe to, where you can see me walking about my house in my pants, singing the uh, Space Precinct theme tune. yes. Doesn't seem to have any subscribers yet. Not yet, but I'm sure it will. No. I mean, it is free of charge. Uh, we have yeah, considered paying subscribers to watch it, but uh, <laughs> let's wait and see what happens, shall we? No, but actually, I am scrolling through. It is amazing. I had no idea. You mentioned that you can listen to stuff there, and it's got links to the podcast, and it has. But it's very easy to find. There's the yes. podcast. There's uh, the uh, the randomizer in its own podcast. That, of course, uh, yeah. First Action Bureau is there to listen to of for course, free. Of course, of course. It's, it's amazing. There. I'm now heading over to watch. There's a trailer for Jerry Anderson, Life Uncharted, the Tech Talk from UFO, Standby for Action concert trailer. And when you hit the, the Read tab, there's articles there from the Jerry Anderson website. There's the Events tab where you can book tickets for the, the screening of the, the documentary at the BFI. Uh, you can book tickets I mean, it's for the concert. It's just... It's all there. This is a beautiful advert for the app. So uh, uh, I like it, Jamie. I think you've all done very well on that. Good. It's very clear and lovely to look at. And it's very fast also compared to the store, which can be a bit slow because there's so many products in it. So Yeah, uh, although you say that, I think the live stream seems to have stuttered a bit because I seem to be caught in a rather uncompromising 
position when I'm doing the feather dusting there. There's some, yeah, there's some yeah. strange noise coming from your end. I don't know what's yes. going on there. I think we should probably cut the stream. I'm uh, cutting it now. Right, okay. okay. Oh, well. Oh, well, there we are. Well, if you haven't seen it, you never will. Uh, Shame. Yes. I think it's probably best nobody ever saw that. Okay. Oh. Right, then. I need to go and wash my eyes out with bleach. Bye. Okay. i better get back to the dusting then. Bye. You have been listening to the Jerry Anderson Podcast. Wasn't it fun? You have been listening to an Anderson Entertainment production.